everyone, it's Mrs. Pearson here. Sorry I can't come to the video, but I'm just in New York at the moment with Mr. Pearson. Here we are ice skating. And uh, earlier on today, we went on a helicopter. There we are, had a great time. And uh, we even went to visit the Statue of Liberty. Here we are, having a great time. Uh, <laughs> I wish, if only, eh? Uh, no. Just kidding, the only reason I'm not coming on the camera today is because I'm having a makeup free day, so I apologise in advance, but um, I thought I would still do my video for you for your this week's curriculum board. So I would like you this week to first of all select a book. I have chosen this one, which is just a book of short stories. You can pick any book you want. Um, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna do a bit of a grammar exercise where we have to um, have a look and find what the different word classes are. So what do I mean by word classes? Here's my list. This is the wonderful word classes. So we've got nouns, verbs, adverbs, adjectives, pronouns, determiners, conjunctions, prepositions, and then any other that you're not sure about. So um, the very first thing I want you to do before opening your book is make a list, something like mine. You can decorate it if you want, or you can just make a, make a list on a piece of paper and leave a bit of space underneath each one. Because in a minute, you're gonna use these word classes and you're gonna create a bit of a tally chart um, by looking at the sentences in your book, okay? So pause the video now and make yourself a list of all the different word classes. Okay, hopefully you've got your list now. So the next thing you're gonna do is open your book onto a page. I've chosen the first story and you're just, just gonna read it first of all, so I'll read it out to you. This is called Ghostesses. I think it's a play on words with their hostesses there. Side by side, the two men stepped on their spades and dug their allotments until it was time for a tea break. Here, I've been thinking, one man said. Thinking, you? The first man sighed and mopped his face. You and all your stories, he said. I don't believe in these here ghostesses. You don't, said the other man and he vanished. <laughs> okay, so what we're gonna do now, once we've read it, is you are going to pick a sentence. I'm gonna start with the first sentence and you're just going to have a look at each word or each phrase in this case and classify it into each category. And we're gonna do a tally chart. So my first word or phrase actually is side by side. I know that that together is a fronted adverbial. So that would count as a, in the adverbs category, that's an adverb or an adverbial phrase. Then we've got the. Now the is a determiner because it goes before my noun. So I'm guessing there's going to be a noun. Oh actually, not yet. The two men. So two is another determiner. We've got two determiners together there. So the two men is a noun. The two men stepped. Well, I know stepped is an action word, so that must be a verb. The two men stepped on. <gasps> Who can remember what on is? It's an example of a preposition. Stepped on there. So there is another determiner. Spades. Stepped on their spades. Spades is a noun. It's an object. And and is a conjunction because it links two clauses together. Dug their allotment. So we've got dug is a verb. That's an action word. There is another determiner. Allotments is another is a place. So that's a noun. What's after allotments? Until it was time for a tea break. So we've got until is a conjunction or a preposition actually. That's kind of a bit of both. Um, it was time for a tea break. It. Hmm, it's a hard one, isn't it? It is actually a pronoun because it's replacing the noun. So I think that's a pronoun. Was. Now was is one that always catches people out. Was, in this case, is actually a verb. Was time for a tea break. Time would be our noun. For, well I know for is a coordinating conjunction, if I think about fanboys, for a tea break. So a would be a determiner and tea break would be a noun. 
There we go. A lot of words in that sentence. How many words have we got? Five, 10, 13, 14, 15, 18, 19 words in that sentence. Goodness me. Okay, I'm gonna pick another sentence now. I'm not gonna do the next one because that's speech. I'm gonna do this one here. The first man sighed and mopped his face. So we've got the, well done, that's a determiner. The first, well first is actually, it's describing the man, so that would be my adjective to describe my noun, I've not had one of them yet. Man is my noun. Side is an action word, so that's a verb. And is another conjunction. Mopped, verb. His, would be a determiner and face would be another noun. There we go. So you've got some kind of tally chart, okay? Because we're going to use that data for something else in a minute. Now, if you wish, you can write out your sentences like I've done next week. You must be thinking, how did Mrs. Pearson do that so quickly? Here's what I made earlier. So I've written out my sentences and then I've um, labelled them and I've actually colour coded them as well. I had lots of fun with my Sharpies today. Um, so I've written out the sentence and above it I've just written what type of word class it is. Just uh, to help me out, okay? So you can create a kind of poster like that if you wish, you don't have to. Uh, this one I, I want everyone to do, but this one's optional, okay? Now, once you've got your tally chart, you can then do a little bit more math. So we're, we're, we're linking three things today. We've got reading, grammar, and maths. So you are going to turn it into a bar chart. Oh, how great is this? Now I've already prepared my bar chart to help me. So at the top, I've remembered to use a title. And in my title, it tells me what the bar graph shows. So I've got bar graph to show the frequency of each word class in a short story, okay? Frequency means how often they're used, okay? Uh, now, along the bottom, I've got my word classes and I've labeled them, I've spaced them out neatly. Along the side here, I'm gonna do the frequency, okay? So first of all, I can label my axes. Frequency. Now I need to come up with a scale, don't I? So thinking about the scale, let's just have a look. My most often, was seven determiners and seven nouns and my least often was uh, one okay so I need something between one and seven I'm actually gonna go up in ones here don't often do that but we're gonna have one two three make sure they're evenly spaced you can measure it with a ruler if you want to be exact four five six and seven Okay, once you've labelled your axes and you've got them there, you're then gonna draw your bars, okay? Uh, I haven't got a ruler, so I'm just gonna use the side of this book, don't tell anyone. Okay, so first of all, we've got nouns, and I've got seven nouns according to my tally chart. So I'm going to draw myself a bar that starts at the bottom, oh, can't see the seven, that's the only problem, <laughs> and goes, oh, good, good estimating there, Mrs. Pearson, uh, up to the seven. Okay, I'm gonna repeat the same for all of them. So now I've got verbs, there's five verbs. So I'm gonna look at my five. You know how to do this year five. You probably did this in year two, in fact. Uh, so make sure they're nice and neat for me, okay? Adverbs is only one. So I'm gonna just draw a little bar for the adverbs. Adjectives is one as well. And pronouns, so I'm gonna cheat there. I'm gonna go across twice. <laughs> Don't tell anyone I cheated. Then just draw the bar in like that. Determiners was seven. So again, that's a nice tall one for determiners. All the way up there. Doing a good job. Conjunctions. There was only three conjunctions. Let me just check you can still see it. Yeah, three conjunctions. So that was up to here. Obviously, you'll be using a ruler and checking this really accurately, of course. Uh, and then last one was prepositions, and there was only one preposition. And here we have my lovely bar chart. Wow, 
reading, grammar and maths all in about 10 minutes. Okay, I'd love to see what you get up to. Please do some of these for me and send them in. You might even want to do that on the computer. Some of you are so tech, uh, tech savvy now that you might just want to create a bar chart or a pie chart, a different type of chart on the computer and send it in. Okay, well done everyone. Miss you lots, hope to speak to you soon and keep up the great work.